Welcome to Tying Michigan's Best Trout Flies. This session we're going to be tying a, a, a takeoff on uh, one of Rusty Gates patterns called the Laid Back Done, but I have added a merger to it. I call it the Laid Back Done Emerger because as you'll see, it's going to cover uh, more than one base. Interesting pattern, easy to tie. So let's get started. So to tie our laid back done emerger, I'm, again, I'm using a size 12. We're going to do the same color combinations as we did. If you saw the uh, previous video, my hackle winged uh, done emerger that uh, is a, was a takeoff on the compare done. This is going to have the same color combinations. And again, this is a style of fly that you can alter and make into anything you want by, by varying the size of the hook and the the color and the, the hackle and the thread and, and all of that. But so we're using again we're using six aught uh, tobacco brown number forty seven on the on the Danville scale and we're going to start out again with covering the shank of the hook all the way back to the bend. And I'm using again I'm using the same materials as I did for the previous fly, we've got uh, a little bit of a uh, medium pardo here for the tail, uh, making a uh, fairly thick as it's going to be part of a trailing shuck style. And so we'll put that on about the length of the hook. And again, we're going to run that up to about just past halfway there. Get rid of our excess. Similar body style, uh, dark deer here, as this is going to represent something relatively early season. Hendrickson, ISO, mahogany, uh, in that genre. So dark, and we'll take a little section of that. And, and as we mentioned earlier, when I'm off camera with deer here in my hand, I am taking out the fuzzy parts so that so that uh, the fly float or fly will float properly yeah. and we'll put that on right to there anchor in the front looser wraps to the back pushing down so we cover the shank some firmer wraps at the bend giving it the shock appearance back up and to here now i've selected a couple of again i'm using uh, the grizzly dyed dark dun for the for the wing on this or for the hackle rather this is, in this case, it's just going to represent the hackle and not the wing. So we'll tie that and secure that. Give ourselves, oopsie, a few wraps to the front. Like so, anchor, now we're going to trim the, the uh, hackle off the top portion here. This is where the laid back part comes. We're making a, a, a nice little pathway for the wing to lay back because when you think about it a mayfly's wings while they're not flat down like a stonefly or a caddisfly they do slant slightly toward the rear and that's what this fly imitates and this is another good fly to use uh, if you if you're having cold weather uh, because the wing is clearly visible to the fish on this fly so we're going to take off another section of dark deer hair for the wing. Remember those uh, early season mayflies have darker wings. So we have a little section about like that. 
and we'll measure it off about there. Clip it there. Tie it on there. And you can leave that stub sticking up, that's fine. Now your wing is laid back over the body, giving the impression of a dun. So now you've got, well, let me, let me finish the fly before I get into this spiel. <laughs> we'll just whip it off there. So now you have the trailing shuck. The fish can take it as an emerger. Again, this fits into the, my thoughts on fly pattern rationale. And the, you have the visible wing. So if a fish needs to see a, a, a fresh hatch done with the wing sticking out or slanting back, laid back, as Rusty put it, then you have it in this, in this fly as well. And of course, if, when you're fishing it, you can trim this uh, in a V or trim it flat, whatever you want. But, but uh, this makes a nice all-around impression of both stages, uh, the emerger and the done with the wing in that, and uh, slanted in that way. So uh, nice fly, durable, uh, tie some up, see how you like them. Uh, thanks for watching.